Hello guys, we are back with the 23rd episode of the West Bromwich Albion crew mode. Um, I showed one of the contract offers being accepted because obviously um, there were some contracts expiring from the last episode ending the season. So um, yeah, we uh, quickly, I didn't show all of them because obviously you don't need to see all of them, but basically we got all the players to sign back with us. Anyways, now we are jumping into the Confed Cup. Um, this is a cup I really wanted to do well in. Um, it's sort of weird how I'm swimming the first game. You might guys might be wondering why. It's just because I um, I believe Mexico isn't like a very good team compared to Uruguay, and um, as you can see there, um, we do manage to pick up the win, and um, I was pretty confident that 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 was gonna happen, and I really want to make an impression on this Confed Cup, um, going far in with Uruguay, so that maybe some other international teams will maybe um. They might maybe uh, try and pick me up and um, let me know in the comments below if you want me to stay with Uruguay or go to a different side, um, international side that is. And obviously I, th I believe the Tottenham job is still up so I, I might still join Tottenham. I doubt I will but um, yeah so that's um, they're, they're reviewing my performance of the season and seeing whether they should keep me or sack me. And so we go into a game against Netherlands next because obviously all the games are very close together and because they don't want to take a long time in the Confed Cup. They want to take about a month, if that makes sense, I guess. But um, yeah, so they want to take more time in the playoffs. So they have the group stages uh, separate, close together so the playoffs can be a little bit more separated. Anyways, Netherlands are actually a part of our group and I was pretty worried going into this game, but... Um, not sure what to expect, but I, I I just wanted to basically pick up a tie. But um, as you can see here, we um we we get the lead early on, and I don't know why I skipped that. That was my bad. But um, yeah, just doing some passing around. Um, Gaston Ramirez passes it to Gas Castro, who then gives it to Cavani, and Cavani basically just slots it down. Um, really don't know why no one blocked that. No one got in the way of it, but. It was a goal, and I was pretty pleased with it because if we could hold this lead off um, for the rest of the game, we'd have six points in our group, and we'd be ahead of everyone else, um, I believe, unless Ivory Coast is has beat um, Netherlands, which they which they haven't because they are sitting on zero points right now, and they are playing Mexico, Mac, Mexico, whilst we are playing um, Netherlands. Anyways, Luis Suarez um, just dribbling in and out. Their players just puts it past their keeper. And we get a nice 2 nothing lead, obviously with the 45th minute OP. Uh, we, we capitalize on that. But then in the second half, we decide to make some substitutions because um, we have a game against Ivory Coast next. Um, definitely one of our weaker games. So we may be playing a weaker team, but who knows. And so we bring on Hernandez and Rekt Sisaya. I have no clue how to pronounce his name. Sorry about that if you're Uruguayan or get offended by that or anything. But yeah. So, um... Those subs I was hoping would maybe fortify our team, uh, make a, make us be able to hold on to this nice 2 nothing lead. Anyways, in the 71st minute, whatever his name is, passes to Hernandez. And Hernandez is a pretty good young player. As you may remember, in the first transfer window of this career mode, we looked at getting him, but um, it just didn't happen. And we ended up picking up S-Fine instead. And so, yeah. Um... Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe we got S fine in the second transfer window. No, that's not true. We got S fine in the first, I think. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Robin gets a goal in the 84th minute, um, and that makes us only have a two goal lead, which is still a pretty good lead to sit on. But then in the 90th minute, 90th minute OP, remember? Of course, Vandervaart's gonna pass it to Luke De Young, who's just gonna nail it. Well, not nail it, but just slide it past our keeper. And that's going to make it 3-2. And I was getting a little bit worried at the time. Maybe Netherlands were making a comeback or something. But it, it was pretty unlikely, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, so that's how the game ended. Um, we beat Netherlands, which is a pretty nice accomplishment. And we go up to six points in our group. And we are the leaders of our group. So we will be playing a weaker team in the um, first round of the playoffs. But first, we can't worry about that yet. First, we have to face off against Ivory Coast, who actually lost um, Mexico. So they are now sitting on zero points, while Mexico's on three, I believe. Netherlands on three, I think. Yeah. And then we are at six. So um, six, three, three, zero. 
how it goes and here it is the end of the season end of season one are you ready are you ready here we go end of season one it's coming to an end it's been a great season qualified for the Euro League met standards that weren't expected are you ready let's do it you know we're gonna get who with the emails there's gonna be lots of them but let's end the season and it's done and there's a lot of emails but that's expected and you can see at the bottom there West Brom board saying super season and we get our last scouting report of this season not sure if I'm gonna call this episode season 2 episode 1 or season 1 episode 23 I don't know um I guess I'll just call it season 1 because that's what it started on but yeah um so we we signed a pretty nice player um, up to 94 potential but obviously he hasn't been scouted very thoroughly so he may not go up to there so um yeah lots of young players that we would definitely be looking to sign and um right now you guys are pretty close to where i am in the career mode in real life and i've i've been playing more ultimate team not playing career mode just so we can catch up basically and um yeah so you can see there we're just releasing some of the guys that aren't really necessary to our team and signing some of the ones like the 86 to, or 90 ones that that's potential wise obviously that um could potentially be very um young good prospects anyways we get all the loan um player loaned players back and most of them have improved pretty well um it's been pretty uh it's it's I haven't missed them at all, and they've come back, and they've been improved. So, obviously, once the transfer window opens, which is after this year, um, this Ivory Coast game, the Ivory Coast game is right on the transfer, the um, July the 1st, which is the transfer opening day. And so, yeah, you can see um, you're, the Uruguay supporters are loving me. Who doesn't, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, so we move on to the game in, um, I'm not sure where it is, actually, but... We move into a game against Ivory Coast and we simulate it because obviously even if we lose we'll probably still go through and um, yeah so we take a we, we only win one nothing which is actually a little bit surprising but luckily Cavani picked up the goal for us and I was pretty happy with that victory because now we went through with nine points and we're looking like a pretty strong team and um, I'm not sure what the score was between um, Netherlands and Mexico, but you can see at the bottom left corner it just passed. Spain actually beat New Zealand four nothing, which actually I'd expect because Spain are a very strong team. And um, yeah, so we move on from here and we get our league objective, which I'm surprised wasn't given in the first email um, batch of emails. Anyways, so they want us to finish mid table again, which is a little bit strange, but um, we probably will be requesting some, some funds. For if we um, finished Euro League again, because obviously uh, we did it this season with a stronger squad, why don't we do it next season? Um, so yeah, uh, they want us to reach the semi-final of the and of a domestic cup, and um, about they gave us some transfer market information and um, an update on the youth squad, and um, we have some pretty good players like um, Store who can go up to 88 and. At least 72 which actually very good and um yeah so we have we still have a 92 um highest and we have a 91 i believe and so um we offer this guy gustav store um a contract i believe and we just offer it because um we might as well sign all the um the guys that are getting to the point where we sh we maybe could sign them and then we go into the transfer market and we find this guy on Angelo Marone. And um, he's only 68 rated, but he has five star skill moves and three star weak foot. And he's extremely tall. Um, I believe he's like six foot four or something, and he has 83 pace. So he's a very strong player. Um, probably pretty good at heading as well. This guy we didn't sign because of the one star weak foot. And um, he had okay sprint speed, but still, um, we didn't want him because of his weak foot. Anyways, um, we sign a couple other guys, um, not just Marone, because um, this is all the generated players, I believe, um, because of uh, all the other clubs maybe 
just um, releasing them right away, or maybe uh, this they've just been scouted and just basically been left floating. Anyways, so um, we don't get any of the, these guys at the moment, but um, we actually offer for Mohamed Bassam. Um, we, we say he's an important team player because we're obviously going to need a replacement for Boaz Myhill. And then um, just looking at some of the other st stats, sorry, we go and look at um, uh, Ilya Milanov, and he's 20 years, want 21 years old, sorry. And he looks pretty good. Um, he had pretty, he had decent pace. And for a center back, I, I believe he had like um, pretty good pace. Anyways, look at this guy, um, Santana Albarno, Alborno, um, five star skills and four star weak foot, maybe vice versa. I don't know, but um, we we definitely want to sign him because he'd be a great player at the team. Anyways, as we're coming to a close in this episode, the Germany game will be next episode. My apologies, and we are actually doing double upload today, even though I didn't get the five likes that were desired. Um, that doesn't matter. It's all good. I just want to get you guys caught up. So we get um, two contract offers. One that was accepted by Marone, but one by Milanov that he wanted more money because he's not grateful. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so we're coming to close in this episode. Leave it a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Other than that, have a good day.